Amen. Now the kiddos, they get uh, before they go to children's church, they can give to the Lord. Thank you. Lots better. Well, good morning and good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I was going to bring a video clip of a part of a Cincinnati Reds baseball game, but I didn't think you'd probably be in the mood to watch baseball this morning. Although the clip is, well, I thought it was funny. You might not have the same take on that, but some of you might have watched that. It just happened last week in Cincinnati. They were in the ninth inning, I think, during this baseball game. And one of the Reds fans decked out in a Cincinnati Reds jersey hops over the fence and decides that he's just going to go out there on the field and uh, talk to a player and just uh, be out there on the field, which how many of you know, you ought not do that, right? That's, a, that's against the rules. That's against the law. You're not supposed to jump out on the field and hang out with the players. Well, he was running around, of course, and there's police officers, security guards chasing him. I think it's a hoot, but uh, they're chasing him around, and they about get him, and he stops, and he does a backflip, and he about backflips on top of this police officer, and then he kind of stops, and you don't really know what's going to happen. And the next thing you know, this guy, this fan, starts running again. And so now the chase is on again, but the police officer ends it pretty fast. He tasers him, lays him out, face planted in the turf in the outfield, and that was the end of his 15 seconds of fame. But anybody see that? Right, you saw saw that. I, I, this happened just this past week. I think I don't know Thursday or Friday. He was in court, and the judge had a pretty funny uh, remark. He said, "You know, I think everybody on social media because it went viral." He said, "I think everybody thinks that you stuck that landing pretty good when you did that backflip." And he said, "Yeah, I wish I'd never done it or something like that." But he is banned. Banned from uh, going to, to any more Reds game for probably ever maybe I don't know but uh, some consequences for sure today I could go in a lot of different directions with that um, uh, and you may have some opinions about all of that I have my own opinions about that uh, but we want to <laughs> uh, look at look at God's word today when it comes to respecting and honoring authority all right can we talk about that today respecting and honoring authority and you got your opinions i got my opinions but let's look at god's opinion because really in the grand scheme of things god's opinion is really the only one that matters as believers amen so we've been uh looking at the ten commandments and so welcome to week two uh, of this series looking at the ten commandments and commandment number five uh, talks about respecting authority, specifically moms and dads, but, but every commandment that you find in Exodus 20, and that's where we're going to be in a little bit, every commandment of God that's found in Exodus 20, you know, a little bit later on, Jesus kind of expands on that, right? He, he expands on those Ten Commandments and said, well, yeah, you know, and so every commandment... Um, you can really expand that teaching on, and so that's what we're going to do today. Commandment number five talks about honoring moms and dads, honoring parents, but the, but the Bible also teaches, right, that really we should respect and honor uh, those in authority, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, again, diving into the Ten Commandments, like I said last week, the Ten Commandments are not given to us uh, to save us, right? That's not what the Ten Commandments are designed to do. If you just say, oh, I've, 
you know, keeping these Ten Commandments and I check all these boxes off and I'm good and, and look at me, I'm just doing great. That's not what the Ten Commandments were designed to do. They're really designed to shape your heart, to help your heart and your life, right, to be more like Christ, right? And yeah, there's some do's and there's some don'ts, but God, help shape my heart so that I want to do the things that are pleasing and acceptable to you, and I want to stay away from, and I want to get rid of the things that are displeasing to you. Um, and the other thing about the Ten Commandments, why they really aren't a, uh, a, a good gauge of, of, of saving us, right? We, that's not what they're designed to do. But you remember about a year ago, or maybe it had been longer than that, we, we had the Ten Commandment test. Remember when I gave you the Ten Commandment test, and we went through all of the Ten Commandments, and I had, had you to keep score of how many of those commandments that you have kept flawlessly, perfectly, your entire life. And I said, as we went through that, I said, just mark down. You probably won't need a calculator to, to tally up that, but you just, you just count the ones that you have kept perfectly, flawlessly your entire life, and you mark them down. And so at the end of that, I ask by a show of hands, how many of you kept all Ten Commandments? And to my shock, nobody raised their hand, right? And then we went down to how many of you had kept nine, eight, seven, six. Nobody had raised their hand, and we kind of stopped at six because it's kind of embarrassing, and we kind of thought, wow, we need to have church every day, right? But we concluded that the Ten Commandments, there just wasn't designed to save us. It's not our ticket to heaven. Jesus does the saving. Amen? Jesus does the saving. And again, they're given to us. God's rules, God's laws given, us, given to us to shape our heart, to help us to fall in love with God and to want to do those things that are a blessing to him, but also a blessing to those around us. And so Jesus, the only one who was without sin, and yet he took your sin, my sin, the sins of the world, nailed them to the cross. He paid the penalty for sin, which is death. That's the payment. That's the penalty that you're due, that I'm due. And praise God, we didn't have to do that, that Jesus took on that penalty and paid for that in full, right? Died on the cross, not the Ten Commandments, but Jesus did that. But he didn't stop there, right? Three days later, rose in victory, defeated death, sin, and the grave. And so now, Everyone, you, me, whoever wants to put their faith and their trust in Jesus, make Him leader of their life, right? Because of what Jesus has done, and you put your faith in Him, the only one who was sinless, and yet He died for us. You put your faith in Him and said, yes. Ask Him to forgive your sins, come into your life, build your life on Him. And the Bible says that you, at that point... God gives you righteousness and you are right with Almighty God. And you're able to enjoy the blessings that God has for you. You're able to be called a child of God, a son of the King, a daughter of the King. And so you're able to live life with God's <laughs> blessings here. But what's more, you have the assurance of spending all eternity with God in a heavenly home forever and ever, right? And we sang, what a day that will be, right? And what a day that will be. Thank you, Jesus. So commandment number five tells us to honor our parents. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And we'll just read that passage of scripture. It says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And so on this Father's Day, right? Honor your father, honor your mother, 
honor your parents. But again, I think this command really is broader than that, and the Bible teaches that, and we'll look at some scripture to back that up in just a moment. But really, we need to honor and respect those around us who are in authority. Police officers, bosses, teachers, coaches. We want to be honoring and respectful to those in authority. Now, um, the question that a lot of people have, and it's a good question, I think, is, so what happens when the authority over you or around you, um, they're just doing stuff that's wrong, okay? I'm not talking about umpires and referees, right? You, <laughs> right that, uh, what happens when, when they're really telling you to do stuff that are wrong and maybe even evil, what are you supposed to do there? Are you still supposed to be obedient and, res and, uh, and honoring and do what they tell you to do? And I'll just say this. kind of depends on what you mean by wrong. Right? If a, a boss, a teacher, a coach, some leader... Uh, if by wrong you mean they're telling you to do something immoral, illegal, uh, something that goes against the Word of God, then in that case, God wins, right? If, if you've got to choose between what man is saying and what God is saying, then always choose what God has to say. You always want to do what, what God has for you and what God has to say about that. And so your response to that authority, if they're telling you to do something immoral or goes against the, uh, God's word, your response to that should be, no, not going to do that. Think about the women in Exodus where the Pharaoh told the midwives to throw all the baby boys, right, all the newborn baby boys into the Nile River. The midwives said, mm, no, not going to do that. Right, Moses' mom and dad Right? They, they defied the orders of the Pharaoh, the authority in charge. Right? I'm going to keep my baby boy alive. Why? Well, <laughs> because killing a child goes against God's rules. Right? Goes against God's laws. So no, I'm not going to do that. Now, I understand that uh, a lot of people, when it comes to what God has to say... Some people don't like that and not very popular. And I think some of that reasoning is because when you do what God says and what God would have you to do, you have to do things a little bit different, right? You have to live differently. You have to do things that are a little bit different. Think about Daniel and his three buddies, uh, right? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they were told to bow down. You just need to bow down and you need to worship this, this image of the king, and they said, nope, not going to do that. That's a violation of commandment number one. We're not going to do that, right? And the king said, well, then we'll just throw you into the fiery furnace. And they said, well, I hate it, but you're just going to have to do that. Do what you have to do, but we're not bowing down. And then a few chapters later, Daniel finds himself in a similar situation. He's living in the, in the, in the land, and, and they've passed a law where you can't pray. you just got to pray to the king. And uh, Daniel said, well, again, sorry about you, but I'm going to pray to my God. And the king said, well, Daniel, if you're going to insist on doing that, then I'm just going to have to th throw you into the lion's den and again, Daniel said, right, so be it, right? The God who got me in here is the God who's going to get me out of here by prayer. Do what you have to do, but I'm not doing that. So always be obedient and always follow what God has to say over what man has to say when they're telling you to do something that's 
immoral and goes against God's word. Now, most of the time, uh, when somebody in authority, in authority, bosses, coaches, right, teachers, uh, some leader is asking us to do something. Um, typically, it's not something immoral or illegal. Um, so what happens in those instances where you're being told to do something by somebody in authority and you just don't like it, right? <laughs> it's not immoral. It's not illegal. It doesn't go against God's word. You just kind of don't like those rules. You just want to do it different. You think those rules are silly. Well, sorry. <laughs> You really need to respect and honor that authority, right? Why is that? Well, the reason is because roots, the roots of all authority can be traced back to God. And that's really the, uh, in your outline, that's the first point that, that we want to, uh, to have this morning is who is behind authority? Who's behind all authority? And the answer to that is Almighty God. Romans chapter 13, the first two verses there in Romans 13 says this. It says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Did you get that? All the authorities, right? Who's in charge? Who's in control? God is in control. Who establishes all the authorities? God does. Consequently, verse 2, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So again, it's just a good idea to respect and honor those in authority. Jesus did that. Remember back in John chapter 19 when uh, right before Jesus was being crucified, he gets interrogated. He's, he's, he's being questioned by the authorities at that time. Um, the Roman governor Pilate is interrogating Jesus and John chapter 19 gives us that conversation that they have and so Pilate said to Jesus, Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Right? Pilate not used to that. He's used to, he asks a question, people respond. But in this case, Jesus didn't give an answer. And so Pilate flexes a little bit. And so Pilate said to Jesus, are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and I have the authority to crucify you, right? And so Pilate letting Jesus know, I'm in charge, I'm in control, I can let you go or I can kill you, right? And so Jesus' response to that in verse 11, Jesus answered Pilate and said, you would have no authority over me at all if it had not been given to you from above. Right? God has all authority. Right? God has all authority. He's in charge. And I've said this before. God's in charge of the people who think they're in charge. Right? We've got a lot of people who think they're in charge, but they're really not. God is in charge. God is the one who is able to, um, to be in control and is in control. And so the roots of authority can all be traced back to Almighty God. So we will honor Him. We respect God and we want to do the things that are pleasing and acceptable in His sight. And so, yeah, we want to be obedient to what God has to say. They help shape our hearts. So help me. Help me to be obedient. And when I get it wrong, right, when I mess up, Forgive me, right? Praise God there's forgiveness. Amen? Amen? Praise God that there's forgiveness and we can go to God when we slip, when we mess up, when we go over right sideways, maybe even in the ditch. There is forgiveness. Because your flesh 
just doesn't really want to obey all the time. Even if your heart is wanting to and you're trying to, your flesh just doesn't want to always obey. And so God, help us when we fail, when we cheat, when we lie, when we gossip, if there's some perversion, if there's some, um, if there's some sin, if there's some addiction, God, help us to get rid of that. Help us not to do that again. Certainly don't allow us to incorporate that into our lifestyle. We don't want to keep repeating that over and over and over, right? We know that something's wrong. We don't want to jump out over the fence and go out into the field and do backflips, right? God, help me not to do that. I might go to the game. I might be tempted to do that, right? I might even think about it, but God, help me to be obedient to the things that you've called me to do. And with your help, right, we can do that. And so honor God, respect Him, and really our Christian lifestyle should be honoring and respectful to everyone around us, right? God has made everyone in His image, and so we need to show compassion and mercy and give lots of grace. Um, God is so patient with us, and so we need to, again, God help me to be patient with some people, help me to show grace. We know God is patient with us, right? God's patient with you. God's patient with me. His word says so. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, God is patient, and he doesn't want anyone to perish, but instead he wants everyone to come to repentance, right? And that's kind of the view that we need to see other people when there's disobedience going on and when people are doing some things that, right, they're doing the back, back flips, right? And, 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 and we know what's coming to them, right? We know they're going to get tased. There, there's some consequences that's going to happen to them. And so my heart's saying, I don't want to see you go through that, right? I love you too much to just watch you do things that are disobedient and dishonoring and disrespectful to Almighty God, right? Instead, I want you to experience all the blessings of God, all the favor of God. I want you to, to chase after God. Don't chase after every thrill and every uh, experience trying to fill that emptiness inside. Chase after Jesus. He will fill every void, every empty spot that you have, Jesus is enough. And I think that's the conversation we need to have with people who are far from God, who are doing some things that we know is just not right. That's the conversation. Lots of love, lots of grace, right? Lots of grace, not going to win people over by being mean and hateful and up in their grill about stuff. I love you too much. And I want you to experience all that God has for you. I mean, that's the good news of the gospel is, is just the best news ever. And so we get to share that hope with other people. Your life will be changed for the better. Just allow Jesus to be the leader of your life. And we can share that with compassion. We can share that with enthusiasm, right? It's the best news ever. And just tell people, try it for yourself. And you'll see how good God is. He's a good, good Father. Amen? Amen? And so we don't want them to miss out what God has for them. And, and we do. We know that there's consequences to disobedience and consequences to sin. That's one of the principles in the Bible that's laid out from cover to cover, right? You're, you're going to reap what you sow. And we know that. And it plays out. It's common sense. You jump out on the field, you're going to get tased. I mean, there's consequences to sin, and we don't want to see people to have to endure that and go through that. And so we share with people the good news of the gospel and how much God loves them and how much He has uh, for them and that their lives can be changed for the better uh, when they call upon the Lord. But consequences, right? consequences. And I want to talk about that for just a moment because rules are rules, right? Every, every home here, moms, dads, parents, grandma, grandpas, y'all got rules, right? Every, every home has some rules and you expect your kiddos to, to follow those rules. And if they don't, 
then there's discipline and there's consequences that follow. Our commandment today, commandment number five, is honor your father and your mother. It's interesting that that word honor in Hebrew is defined as a person, you think about it, defined as a person who has a lot of weight. Uh, there's uh, not physical, but just there's a lot to them. There's a lot about them. Um, heaviness, there's heaviness about them. Back in the 60s, people would say, whoa, man, that's heavy, right? Now, uh, some of you might have said that, that's heavy, man. Now, I was only two years old back in the 60s, so I didn't say heavy man too much. Um, although my child, Easton, uh, he's coming back from Georgia today, but he told me just a couple weeks ago, this is how old my child thinks that I am. He said, Dad, he said, so, so when you were growing up, he said, so, so which of the dinosaurs was your favorite out of all of them? And I'm thinking, seriously? I don't know if that's a joke or you really think that I'm that old, but back in the 60s, I was two, spent two years in the 60s, but so, so what did they mean when they said, whoa, that's heavy, man? Well, today we would say, wow, that's huge, right? That's, uh, that's, a, that's a big deal, right? That's, that's important. So when you apply that to moms and dads and people in authority, what you're saying is, wow, you're important, right? Heavy, man. You're important. You're a big deal. You're special. And so my attitude towards you is going to be, I'm going to do the things that you've asked me to do. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to have the right heart attitude about it. Got to get that right. Sometimes you got to remind right, the kiddos, if you're going to do something, let's do it with the right heart attitude. Don't want to just go through the motions and do something and then slam the door and roll the eyeballs. You might as well have not even done it. But uh, do be obedient with the right heart attitude. And uh, I'm in the process of, of raising seven kiddos, learned a lot, continue to learn a lot, but I think one of the most important things that you can do is teach your kiddos to be respectful and honoring to those in authority. And I got time to just, I'll share some, just a little bit of wisdom with the time that I've got. Um, I think it's important to teach that respect and honor. Um, and sometimes you're not going to be able to side with your kiddo when they come home and they're whining and crying and complaining about the teacher <laughs> or the coach. You're not always going to be able to side with them when they come in and say, oh, I can't believe the teacher. Right? I mean, are you serious? A pop quiz the first week of school? Can you believe the coach had us to run an extra 25 laps? I mean, that's unheard of. And so what happens? you got a choice. You can pile on and you can jump on and you can push back against that authority and say, how dare that teacher? That's just crazy. How stupid of them to give you a pop quiz. That coach has ought to be fired. I mean, how dare they make you, right? Got a choice. You can, you can pile it on and side and, and, and push back with that authority. But what can happen, and it's not a big leap, if you're pushing back and bucking against that authority too, it's not a big leap for them to push back on the coach and the teacher, and then it's not long before they start pushing back on your authority. And how stupid is that? And how ridiculous are you to ask me to do that? So that was free for today. Um, uh, just to, I'm, just, I'm just here to help, okay? I'm just here to help. Um, consequences. That's where I was at. Consequences. So um, uh, did, did all that make sense? Right. Listen, if you don't answer me, there's going to be consequences, all right? That's, <laughs> did all of that make the right? Okay. And the consequences are, I'm just going to keep on talking. That's right. Patty knows where I'm going with that, right? So hopefully that's all, that all makes sense. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just for that, I will. I just got, I'll share one story, and I know it's Father's Day, and we'll get out of here, but sometimes consequences and discipline, they, they, they're, they're hurtful, and, and I think they're hurtful because it gets our attention, and hopefully we learn the lesson, but I want to tell the story 
well, Zachary and Lucas, about seven, eight years ago, fighting in the back seat of our car over a matchbox car. Okay, it was their favorite cars. I uh, don't know who's had who. I don't know which one. It might have been Luke's. It might have been Zachary's. I don't know, but they were yelling and screaming, that's mine, give it back to me. I had it first. No, give it to me. And this went on and on until Misty finally spoke up and she said, you know what, and here's the warning. I will take that car and I will get rid of it, right? And so again, just to, so I'm here to help. If you're, threat, if you're going to make a threat... If you're going to make a threat, you better be willing to follow through with it. Because if you just make a threat, right? So you all get that. So she said, I will. I'll get rid of that car. Well, as soon as those words left her mouth, here they go at it again. Give me that. That's mine. I had it first. Screaming, hollering, raising all kinds. So we're driving on Highway 50 right by the overlook at the 50, 450 intersection there. And there's a little a place where you can pull over. They got picnic tables, but the best thing they had was a trash can. And so she says, turn it in here. And so I whip it into the Overlook parking lot. She reaches back there, grabs that car, walks out, throws it in the trash can. We drive off, right? Way to go. I loved it. Right? <laughs> Seven, that's been like eight years ago, brother. <laughs> I figured when Luke got his license, he'd go to that trash can trying to look around and find that car, but uh, didn't do it. But it's funny because, right, eight years, we, we still, we laugh about that and we talk about that. It wasn't funny at the time, but uh, consequences, right? right? Didn't get tased, but uh, it, was, it, was, it was a lesson where, okay, not going to do that and... Um, and I don't think they've fought over another car since then. I will say this about consequences and discipline. Uh, never discipline while angry, angry. Never be abusive. You always got to be in control. Discipline with love, honor, respect, lots of prayer. Uh, but uh, that's, a, uh, that's a freebie too. Uh, do want to close on a high note. Don't want to close on discipline and consequences. But you notice here this commandment number five, which I think is great. Uh, it comes with a blessing. And it's the, only, it's the only commandment out of the ten that comes with a blessing. And uh, that's what happens when you show people honor and respect. Authorities, bosses, police officers, coaches, teachers, moms, dads, grandma, grandpas... Blessings come when you obey this command. And I read that during the call to worship, right? Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? Well, it's the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise. Why? So that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on this earth. And so a blessing when you live a life honoring and respectful to those around you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.